90% of the podcasts that are launched don't make it past the third episode. And of the 10% that make it past episode 3, 90% of them don't make it past episode 20. So only about 1% will make it up to episode 21 on their podcast. That will put you in the top 1% of all podcasters globally if you're able to make it up until the episode 21 on your podcast. 90% of podcasts that are launched don't make it past episode 3. And of the 10% that make it past episode 3, 90% don't make it past episode 20. So simply by producing 21 podcasts, you're in the top percentile of all podcasters ever. 1%, right? Well, the podcasting industry has grown significantly over the years and I believe is still growing a lot. For instance, about 465 million podcast listeners are there globally. And that's about half a billion people listening to podcasts every year. Now, podcasters can also earn anywhere between seven hundred to thirteen thousand dollars a month, or even up to a couple of millions, depending on the number of downloads and viewership that you have on your podcast channels. For instance, with about ten thousand downloads, the data shows that you will make about five hundred to nine hundred dollars monthly. In twenty twenty two, for instance, the podcasting market reached about eighteen billion dollars in total. Now, North America podcasting market contributes about 40% of that total revenue share in the podcasting space. By 2030, it's also projected that that will be about $130 billion of a total revenue share in the podcasting market. Now, podcast advertising revenue is also anticipated to surpass about $4 billion in 2024. Now, the more interesting part of the data is that about 70% of podcasters who have been consistent for over two years will get monetized. That means about 0.7% of podcasters will eventually get monetized after being consistent for about two years doing it. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I talking about all these data today? It's a lot of data I've actually shelled out here. The reason is that I will be down to earth in this monologue and very likely there will not be too much editing i would likely keep all the long pauses and the stuttering and the hesitation that would be in this monologue at this time it's going to be a very honest monologue about the challenges i've faced so far and the ones you may likely face on your podcasting journey the things i have done right the ones i've done wrongly and what i intend to do uh, what i intend to do better going forward now, if you see my face for the first time or you come across this channel for the first time, would you consider subscribing to the channel? And that will be very helpful for me. Let me take you into my data on my channel right now. I started my podcasting journey about a year ago, right around my birthday. My stats so far show that I have about 421 subscribers in total. I have produced 14 episodes in total. And... Out of that 14 episodes, five of them are interviews and the rest of them are monologue. Let's go also into the earn section. In total, I have about 2,100 public watch hours. And you can see here also that I will need about 1,000 subscribers and about 4,000 public watch hours for me to get monetized. Now, that might look like a shabby data to you. And... In some regard, it feels like that, and hopefully nobody judges me because of that. Now, I thought there is a choice before me right now. The choice is, will I fail or will I succeed? What are even the chances that I have for success on this podcast and journey? Now, having produced three episodes so far, I think I am currently in the top 10% bracket that makes it to the third episode. That means I also need to produce about 21 episodes to make it at the top 1% of podcasters globally. Then for me to get the channel monetized, I will be able to make it to the top 0.7% of monetized podcasters globally. The chances for failure at this point is that I do nothing. I lose momentum. I lose passion and totally forget about the reason why I went into podcasting in the first place. So I thought about chatting through all of these today and to be as open, as honest, as maybe vulnerable 
as I could possibly be about the current state of things on my podcast. Now, why did I go into podcasting? I think the reasons tie into several things I've done in my life. So the first thing is I have done several challenging things in my life. I studied a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. I also have a doctorate in electrical, in electrical engineering. I believe my scientific background lends itself towards learning many things. Along the line, I've picked up other very valuable skill sets like programming, like uh, software development and uh, hardware, in fact, uh, a little bit of firmware development as well. And while doing a doctorate degree, one of the requisite skills that you should have is the ability to communicate your thoughts in a very clear and concise way, especially before an academic and intellectual audience. And that I have acquired over time as well. And that lends itself for public speaking skills. There are several other things I have also done that tie into the ability for public speaking over the years. The second is that I have also acquired the ability to analyze a complex situation. So podcasting will also help me to bring simplicity to complex topics. And this ability actually comes alongside my scientific background in that science is complex. And part of it is you should be able to simplify complex things, especially when you're communicating the results to people. So I believe I bring simplicity to complex topics in scientific domains and business and societal issues in art and several other domains of life that I would love to explore in the podcast. The third reason is that I love to learn. I actually enjoy learning. I believe also at this point in my life and in my career uh, with the several complex things I've done in my life, I can learn almost anything and I can self-learn almost anything. And I believe podcasting will also facilitate that sense of being able to learn different disciplines and different domains of knowledge in the society. The fourth reason which I love to mention, is that I love to challenge conventional ideas. I think this also stems from my scientific background. Science, I believe in my own opinion, is a subjective field to truth. It's a field that searches for truth in an unbiased way as much as possible. And podcasting, which is related to this now, I believe is an avenue through which I can search for truth and meaning in an unbiased and balanced perspective that will lead me to the ability to be able to foster meaningful and positive change within the society and particularly actually in Canada where I reside and in several parts of the world. It's one of the reasons I went into podcasting. Being able to spark positive change by insightful conversations and thoughts that are unbiased in their approach and critical of several, you know, mainstream ideas or even thoughts that people have really not stopped to challenge over the years and also being able to bring educational um, conversations to people in different domains of life. The fifth thing which some might find irrelevant is the fact that I am Nigerian by origin. I live in Canada right now and having lived in Africa or I should say having lived in an African country and also lived in North America over several years gives me the advantage in that I am able to compare two systems that I have lived in and experienced and be able to draw inferences from them and be, I think that will tie into uh, the idea of providing balanced perspective and also being able to foster meaningful positive change in this part of the world. It's one of the reasons I went into podcasting. Now at this point in my journey, I have two options. Like I said, I could stop or I could push forward. But at this point, I choose not to fail. I choose to challenge myself. I choose to put the data to test, the data that so far I am actually in the top 10 podcasters globally, even though I have 421 subscribers and just over 200, um, 2,000 public watch hours. But I am in the top 10% podcasters globally. And I will put the data to test, like I said. I will produce 21 episodes, either through monologues or interviews. And for that reason, I will record a monologue per week going forward. I will also show you my progress on this journey each week. Along the line, I will add interviews where I can. And I say where I can because there are challenges, actually, with doing interviews on 
your podcast. It will surprise some who might not have done that before. But I think I will talk about the details of that in another uh, monologue, the challenges with doing interviews on your podcast and the, the mistakes I've made so far. I will also talk about them. Next, I will use the 12-week year principle. This is a well-studied principle that works really well in which you define a tangible goal and you break it down into objectives over a 12-week period and you work through each one of the objectives per week to attain that um, tangible outcome at the end of the 12-week year period. You can look that up on the internet. My goal at the end of this period is to get the channel monetized and you know gain some traction on the channel as well. I also want to avoid running ads at this point. And I choose to just commit myself to achieving the goals for which I started out the podcast in the first place. So you may have clicked on this because you're looking to go into your own podcasting journey or you're just curious about what this guy has to say about his journey so far. I encourage you to support my journey. Support me. Click on the subscribe button. Um, like the video if it makes any meaning to you. And as much as possible, hang around with me on the channel. Hang around with me, hear my stories, hear my insights, see the guests that I will bring on the channel. I will, from time to time, share my story, like I said, and you know, share your own story too. If you've experienced this before, you've been through this journey and you came out of it victorious, and share tips that you think you know, have helped you and could help me on this journey. Another thing here is be encouraged. If you're on this journey and you're thinking about starting and you hesitate and you've seen the data, there's a lot of room for growth in the podcasting space. The market share is actually a huge one if you're thinking about doing it for profit. Um, the profit, I would say, is not the, it's not the most significant factors out of the reasons why I went into this. Of course, I know this is not an NGO I'm running as well, but the, the monetary value is low on the order of priority for me. And I think at this point, success is achievable for me on this podcast, and I love to just embrace that fact. You may be watching this right now, and you know, you're just hesitating, like I said, and you're wondering, should I go into this? Should I not go into this? There are a lot of opportunities in the space, a lot of opportunities to spark meaningful conversations and to bring ins insights to the people out there, to bring knowledge, education, and in an unbiased, unprogrammed way compared to the traditional media. And for that reason, I think anyone should start this. If you have it in mind to do it, just do it. Do it like I am doing it right now. It might be rough, like it is rough for me right now. And I must say, it is indeed rough doing it right now, but do it. And you might be watching this also. You're not intending to do any podcast. For whatever reason, you clicked on this video. I want to leave you with the fact that Success is achievable if you can break your, your goals into a tangible outcome and break that tangible outcome into a 12-week period. It's well studied. One of the things I learned while doing my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering is, the first, it's a very challenging field, but the academic school term, surprisingly, I found is actually a 12-week period. So... When the term starts, what I learned to tell myself, even though you feel like, oh, it's such a daunting thing to go through another, another term, if you look at it like a term, but I learned to actually look at my term like a 12-week period. So at the start of the week, I would tell myself, here is the start of the first week out of 12. By the end of that week on Friday, I tell myself, one week down, 11 to go. At the end of the second week, I tell myself, two weeks down, 10 to go. And at the end of the 10th week, exam is right at hand. I tell myself, 10 weeks down, two to go. Honestly, it was the most encouraging factor for me while going through my bachelor's degree in that my daunting summit is actually broken down into 12-week attainable goals. I found this was not actually applicable while I was doing my doctorate, honestly, because you weren't sure, in essence, when you were going to be done. For instance, I thought it was going to take me four years. It ended up taking me five years to complete the program. But all the same, this is a principle that works. And I hope, to some extent, I've been able to encourage someone. And again, I will try to be honest with you on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will be seeing you next time. Take care.